Hi everyone. In this session, we're going to take a look at some advantages of statistical and frequency as a definition of abnormality and practice you using these evaluation points effectively. Now, when it comes to structuring your area of three paragraphs and discussion, each part of the evaluation should provide you with opportunities to elaborate, explain, conclude, and as we will see in the next video session, counter criticise. There are a couple of things to try and avoid especially when aiming for that top level four answer. So avoid writing points briefly and missing opportunities to show your skills. Avoid listing evaluations and avoid writing incoherently as well. So we can start putting some of those tips into practice in this task now. Read the three advantages of statistical and frequency. And for each one, think about how you can explain what the point might mean. Write your elaboration down and pause the video for five minutes while she complete the task. So let's take a look at the first point. Statistical infrequency uses objective standard deviations to define abnormal behaviour. What you hopefully thought about here is that by being objective, subjective interpretations are avoided and you could have elaborated like the example that's on the screen. Point two was that statistical infrequency can be used to measure normal or expected development in children. Hopefully here you were able to think about where this positive implication may be beneficial. For example, children's intelligence can be measured and compared to the average of their peers. And that's the elaboration I've gone with as the suggested answer. Point three. Statistical infrequency uses data from established and standardised tests, such as IQ assessments. Hopefully the word standardised made you think about scientific credibility. So what you could do for an elaboration is suggest that this means that this definition of abnormality is based on scientifically approved and widely used tests, and is therefore a scientifically credible way of establishing what is normal. OK, so let's take these evaluation points a step further. On the screen, you can see the point, which is in the gold box. Then underneath, we have the elaboration that we used earlier about not relying on subjective interpretations. OK, so let's take these evaluation points a step further. On the screen, you can see the point, which is in the gold box. Then underneath, we have the elaboration about not relying on subjective interpretation that we used earlier. So this time, your task is to write a clear reason for why this is a strength of statistical infrequency. We can look at this example together. So this is an advantage because it reduces the likelihood of misinterpreting information which occurs in subjective definitions of abnormality, such as deviation from social norms. So over to you. Try and add this final part to each of the remaining two points from earlier. So pause here for five minutes while you think the points through and write your answers down. The second point was about the positive implication of statistical infrequency. Hopefully you were able to explain that this is an advantage because of the potential contribution statistical infrequency has for helping people. And the last point was about the use of standardised tests such as IQ assessments and how this adds scientific credibility to the definition. Hopefully you were able to spot that this would then have a positive impact on the validity of this definition of abnormality, like the example on the screen suggests. OK, so when it comes to pulling it all together and writing a good paragraph of AO3 in your essays, this is what it should look like. With a clear point, some elaboration and a reason why this point was worthy of being mentioned in the first place. Now, for the majority of tasks and videos, we'll use the Berger template for our evaluation. Now, if you haven't seen one before, they're a really good writing frame for making sure you showcase your evaluation skills in your assessments. And what I'm going to do here is put our point from earlier into this template so you can see how it looks. Using templates like this really helps to give your evaluation discussion some crucial structure.